Hello friends, welcome to the video series on interview question for SQL PL SQL developers. So this video is a continuation of previous set of videos which is related to constraint and its related functionality. So in the previous set of videos, I have already covered what is constraint, what are the types of constraint and not null constraint and its related questions and unique constraint and its related questions. As a continuation of that, in this video, we are going to learn about what is primary key and its related questions, something like how to define a primary key, once it is defined, where to check the metadata related to the primary key and how to enable and disable the constraint, how to drop and I already have covered few primary key related questions. The link of those videos I will give in the description. So to start with, let's see what are the types of constraints. So here is the list of constraints like not null, unique key, primary key, foreign key, check and ref constraints. Already in the previous set of videos, you have seen about not null and unique. In this video, we'll see about the primary key constraint. In the upcoming videos, we'll see about the foreign key check and reference constraint. So let's start with what is a primary key constraint. So here is the snippet from Oracle documentation. So three important things we should remember when we talk about the primary key. The first thing is whenever we talk about the primary key or whenever we create a primary key on a column, all the values in the column should be unique. It should not be duplicate. Second important point is we cannot have a null value in a column which is defined as a primary key column. This is the one of the main difference between the primary key and the unique key constraint because in a unique key constrained column, the values will be unique. However, we can have any number of null values, but in a column which is defined as a primary key column, we cannot have a null value. And the third important point is whenever we define a primary key on a column, an index will get automatically created. Okay. So now let's see few examples where this primary key columns are applicable in real time. So here are few set of examples. For example, like user ID in a user table, employee IDs in an employee table, product ID in an inventory table and account numbers in a banking system, something. So wherever you want to enforce the uniqueness, so you can use the primary key con constraint also. Now let us see how to define a primary key or what are all the different methods a primary key can be defined on a column. So here is the very first method by specifying a primary key keyword against a column, we can create a primary key against the serial number column. For example, in this example, in a T underscore student table, I'm creating a primary key on a serial number column. So just by specifying the primary key keyword against the column name, we will be able to define the primary key. Okay, so this is the first method. There is one more method. So this in this method also we are specifying the primary key keyword but apart from that we are specifying few more information like a constraint keyword followed by a constraint name. However in this first method we are not specifying the constraint name but in this method we are specifying the constraint name. So what happens is that in the first method when we create the primary key without specifying the constraint name what will happen is Oracle will automatically create a constraint name for us. So let me just show you. So here if you see a constraint is created but a system generated constraint name is generated. Okay, now let me just drop this table and recreate the table with user defined constraint name, right? So now I have created the table by specifying a constraint name here. So let, let me refresh the metadata here. Now if you see here, a user defined name is given rather than a system defined name. Okay, so these are the two methods by which we can create a primary key. So in this two methods, we are specifying the primary key keyword against the column name itself. So this method is like a column level definition. Okay, now let us see one more method. Let me drop this table again. So here is the third method. Instead of defining the primary key constraint as part of the column, here I am defining the constraint at a table level. So the only difference is the constraint definition will be against a table level rather than at a column level in the like in the previous examples. Okay, let me just create this table. Let us refresh the metadata. So as you can see here, the constraint is still created. But what is the advantage of creating at a column level is if at all you want to enforce the uniqueness on a combination of column. For example, in this case, if I want to enforce a uniqueness, not just on a serial number column, but as a combination of serial number and a department column. Okay. In that case, we cannot create a constraint at the column level as it showed in the first two examples. So for that, we need to define the primary key at a table level only. So let me drop this table 
and now create a constraint as a combination of serial number and a department column so this type of primary key which is defined on more than one column is called the composite primary key so let me create the table so the table is created let us refresh and check the metadata information so as you can see here the composite primary key is created on a combination of serial number and department column let's quickly go through the syntax again so here is the first method where we are specifying the primary key as part of the column so here is the second method the second method also we are specifying the primary key as part of the column but here we are specifying the user defined constraint name both the first and the second method are exactly the same the only difference in the second method is we are specifying the constraint name whereas in the first method we are not specifying the constraint name oracle will automatically generate a system defined constraint name in that case the third method we are not defining the constraint at a column level instead we are defining at a table level the advantage of defining at a table level is that if at all we want to define a composite primary key that is on more than one column something like this in that case we have to define the constraint at a table level only fine once a constraint is defined where to go and check the metadata information as i have already shown one way of checking the metadata information is just go to the table definition like this and go to the constraint tab where you will be able to see the constraint information and on which column the constraint was defined another way to check the constraint related information is using the metadata table so we need to remember these two tables one is like a user constraint and another one is called user constraint column so the user constraint table the user constraint metadata table will give the information about the constraint and what is the type of constraint and in which table the constraint was created all this information user constraint column so this specific table that is user constraint column will give the information about on which table the constraint was created and in which column and what is the order in which the constraint was created for example as we created here so this is the name of the constraint and here is the list of columns we created serial number and department and here is the order because we specified the serial number as the first column and department as the second column so just to quickly recap this we need to remember two table one is like user constraint and another one is user constraint column right now that we have created the constraint and we have learned about where to go and check the metadata information now let us learn how to enable and disable the constraint so let me just drop this and recreate the table again table is created now if you check the metadata information here you will be able to see the status as enabled that is by default when a constraint is defined it will be created in an enabled state only but for some cases if at all you want to create a table with the constraint in a disabled mode there is two option one option is by specifying the keyword disable as part of the constraint definition so now let me just drop this table and recreate this table again now if we go and check the metadata information you can see that the table is created with the constraint in a disabled mode there is another way to disable the constraint that is by using the alter table so here is the syntax for alter table you can say alter table table name enable constraint and constraint name if you alter it to enable it the constraint will get enabled now let us check because we have already created the table in a disabled mode now that i have altered the table to make the constraint enabled right so similarly if at all you want to disable the constraint again you can say alter table table name disable constraint constraint name this will go and disable the constraint and finally to drop the constraint suppose if you don't want the constraint anymore in the table you can just go and drop the constraint the syntax is alter table table name just say drop constraint constraint name okay so let me just drop this constraint again let us just refresh and see now that you can see that the constraint is completely dropped from the table just to quickly recap the learning here so whenever we create a table the constraint will be created in an enabled mode if at all you want to create the table with disabled constraint you can go and specify the keyword called disable here another way is to alter the table to enable or disable the constraint as and when needed finally to drop the constraint the syntax is we just need to say alter table table name drop constraint constraint name right now that we have seen like what is a primary key how to define a primary key where to check the metadata information and how to enable and disable the constraint and finally how to drop the constraint 
I have already covered few of the constraint related questions in previous set of videos. So here are few set of questions where I have already covered few related information with respect to the primary key as well as unique key. The link of all these videos I'll give in the description so you can just refer it. If at all you want to learn any other thing you can post it in the comment section or you can send your questions to the mail id given here. But before that you can check whether a similar question has already been posted as part of the interview question series or as part of the subscriber question series. If you're not able to find your question here please write back to me i'll be happy to record and post as a new video if you have learned something new please like this video subscribe and stay tuned for new feature video interview question sql practical question and concept videos and thanks a lot for watching this video